All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files Reacts, where we talk about our favorite movies, TV shows, and video games. I'm your host today, Spencer, joined by my friend from the Fantasy for the Ages podcast, Jim. We'll introduce him in just a second, but hi, Jim. Thanks for coming on. And today, we are, of course, talking about the hottest show on TV right now, The Last of Us on HBO. We're going to be talking about what we think of the show in general up to episode four, and it'll be interesting to get the perspective of someone who hasn't played the games, i.e. Jim, and doesn't have the emotional (laughs) attachment to the source material. So I I think that'll be... (laughs) I, I, I really do think that'll be a cool a cool perspective. I, I can't wait to pick your mind on that. But we're going to dive right into it. But first, since this is a new channel for us, this is our second channel, I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe so that we can grow this thing a little bit more. We have a ton of great content coming up, including more Last of Us stuff, as well as some anime that Gabe and I have been watching. So feel free to stick around for more content like this. And if you're into fantasy and sci-fi content check out our main channel linked below as well well without further ado let's get into it jim i kind of hit you up last minute last night and i was like hey man have you been watching last of us i just (laughs) i just want to talk about it and uh, you were nice enough to come on the next day and and hang out with me so thank you for coming by my pleasure. Of course, when you hit me up last night, I was like, oh, crap, I haven't watched the last episode yet, ah! <laughs> which I did take yeah. care of today. Nice. Yeah, yeah, last last night was funny. That that episode is up now. And it was um, Mike from Mike's Book Reviews. He was supposed to be coming on every two episodes to talk about The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. And we were going to do it Monday. And then for some reason, Monday didn't quite work out. And then I was like, I can push it till Tuesday, but I can't push it till Wednesday. And he's like, okay. And so he was about to come on Tuesdays. Like, man, something just came up. Like, I, I just can't do it tonight. I'm like, that's life. all right, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you know, this is, this is just a hobby. You know, it's not life or death here. So I'm like, that's, that's totally fine, man. So I kind of hit up a few people, people that were in my time zone. Uh, you're, you're on the short list of people that I contact. Cause yeah. you know, you've, you've been on our channel a lot. We've been on your channel a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and so I, I hit you up, I hit up uh, the Fiction Fans podcast, and I was surprised how many people had not seen episode four yet. Uh... I, and I, I, I would have thought that with episode three being as, you know, kind of beloved by the community at large, would have figured everybody would have rushed to see episode four. But, um, but yeah, so I was, I was on my own for that one. And that was actually, (laughs) that was actually really fun. I haven't, I haven't sat in front of a camera with like basically no notes. Usually when I do my like spoiler free reviews and stuff, that's all very scripted. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I, I just sat in front of my camera with a drink and I just talked about the last of us. <laughs> it was, it was cool. I, I actually had a good go. time doing it by myself. Well, um, here's what's happened with the last of us for me. I yeah. got my wife to sit down and watch it with me first episode. And I'm like going into this totally sure. This is not going to be her kind of show, right? Just not her kind of thing. But you know, I brought her along onto some things in fantasy and sci-fi over the last year or a couple of years. I've had some success Got so she humored me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did she watch The Expanse? You know, she's she's with okay. me on some of these things now. Nice. House of the Dragon. She's done that, you know. But she watched the first one. And, you know, about partway through, she started multitasking, doing other things. Uh... She watched the second episode, too. And then when that's over, she's like, you know, I think this is one of your shows. Right. You just go ahead. Right. So now I run into that problem that when a weekend comes along, mm-hmm. I can't watch the episode because I'm here with my wife. Oh. I'm not going to say, see you later, dear. I'm just going to w- go watch HBO for an hour. Right. So it, it's going to tend to wait until, you know, right. I can oh, do it sure. while she's still at work or something. Yeah, right. that's what happens. I'm going to be late all the time. But I have a question for you then. Yeah. Episode four. I know we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff with this, but episode four, before I watched it, I saw some bashing of it on social media. People who were like bored. 
Yeah. People were like, nothing really happened. I loved the episode. I totally saw what they were doing and character building. And oh. I'm like, what the heck? Why were people bored? So were you bored, Spencer? So here's the predicament I'm in. I have not played the video games for a long time. It's been, I mean, it, I I don't think, I think the the last time that I actually played The Last of Us the first game was when it came out. Mm-hmm. So that was long, like a decade ago, at least. And so I don't remember a lot of what is happening in the game at this point. And people online are comparing it to the game, saying that episode four is they're seeing some divergence from the game. But as far as I can remember, I don't think so. I, I don't think there is. Uh, there, It's definitely a different town than it was in the game. I think in the game, it was like Philadelphia or something. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of that controversy. I'm, I haven't really seen a whole lot of people saying th- that they were bored. But for me, I think it is the least memorable episode because I, I liked it. Like I did enjoy it. I probably enjoyed it more than I liked uh, episode three. But I just can't remember, like, even when I was doing my thing last night and just kind of recording my thoughts on on three and four, I had gotten into four and I'm like, "Mm." I'm like, I can't really remember what happened at this part. And so I had to skip through a lot of it. And I was listening to a podcast today where they were talking about episode four. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that happened. Oh, yeah, that happened. That's right. That's right. And so I, I feel like what's kind of happened for me is episodes one and two were amazing. Like I, I, I legitimately teared up at the end of episode two because I was just like, they got it perfect. They got it perfect. And after, you know, we could go on forever talking about wheel of time and rings of power and all these other adaptations that have come out lately that have just really made me upset seeing this and seeing it (laughs) seeing it done right i'm like oh like it just like filled my soul and so you know those first two episodes for me were really really special and then episode three came around and i liked it i i really did but i feel like episodes one and two were going up and then three and four kind of plateaued they didn't go down but they they kind of plateaued for me a bit and i'm expecting the next episode or maybe the episode after that to to go back up and we'll we'll see a spike again as we get closer to the end of the season um but i mean sorry to answer your question no i i don't think i was bored in in the fourth episode there was actually quite a bit i liked about it so see i bring the perspective and i'm being consistent here of not having watched the video game, played the video game. This is how I did The Witcher as well. I had not played any Witcher. I went in, I hadn't read the books. I went in, watched the show. And I'm like, and the first season, I was confused as heck. What the heck's going on? But this one, apparently the source material is just a good story. Because you're telling me, you know, episodes one and two stayed very true to the video games. And yeah. I'm just watching it as someone who has no context. Yeah. And it's a great story. I'm getting it. Yeah. Now, episode three, I thought was a masterfully done episode. But I thought it was also, I mean, I don't know if those characters come from the video games or not. Right. But it was almost like, okay, we want to tell a different kind of story for episode three and it was something very you know socially progressive something showing um you know just the reality of true love for each other and how it you know people can find each other and it transforms you and then i mean it was very touching very moving episode but it didn't really advance the story much just this little bit you know so now we know why they have a truck you know, right. kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> and we know, you know, why they're not there when they get to the place they were trying to get. So we got that right. story. But I thought writing wise, directing wise, just as someone who doesn't know anything about the video games, that was an excellently done episode. I mean, yeah. Wow. Okay. Then we got to episode four. And again, I don't know anything about what's supposed to happen. And I'm just, this yeah. is great. The storytelling is excellent. The narrative is moving forward. 
I enjoyed seeing how they're building this relationship between our two main characters. I, I do want to back up one thing, go back to season or episode two. You mm-hmm. said the ep- the last part of it, they got it so right. It was yeah. perfect. Yeah. And I was like, they keep killing people off, man. Because mm-hmm. I thought she was going to go on because I remember her from Fringe. She was a star in that show. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen her in anything since. They brought her yeah. back. for the- Oh, crap. She's dead. You know? yeah. And you knew she was going to die is what you're telling mm-hmm. me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. they are catering to the p- person who doesn't know the video game very well in how they tell this story. Okay, that's that's good to hear then. Uh, yeah, Tess, oh man, that that is a heartbreaking death for sure because yeah, what a great character. I mean, she does mm-hmm. she does so much to kind of um, you know, not only is she great in her own right, but she also brings out she's kind of the turning point for Joel where he doesn't even want to be doing this. He's been telling her the whole time, we got to go back to the QZ. We got to take her back. I don't want anything to do with this girl. Right. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. (laughs) And and then they get to this moment where Tess gives herself up to save them because she's already bitten. She's already, you know, ready to go. And he's like, well, I'm just going to go back to the QZ. And she's like, no, you have to keep going. You like, what if this girl is the real deal? What if she really does have the cure? And this is kind of the question that you'll have throughout the rest of the, I mean, I guess throughout the rest of what they cover of the first game, how important is it that Ellie cannot get infected? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. what, like how much of humanity rests on the fact that they could possibly make a cure or something. Right. And so that, that is like a huge part of like how, you know, everything kind of comes to fruition and yeah. Oh, it's such a great just story beat, but uh, Tess is kind of that, that linchpin. That's like, all right, like we're going to bring out this kind of hero in Joel and Mm -hmm get him to be like yes you do need to see this through yes you do need to you know get her to where she needs to go because what if what if she could save everyone and episode four i see it shifting just a little bit now though it's not just about that anymore Mm -hmm. because they they played into the connection Mm -hmm. they're developing an actual rapport for each other Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, late in the episode where he finally starts laughing over that horrible pun. You oh, know, I it, loved it. It was great. <laughs> but th- they built up to that nicely, you know, yeah. and they are developing something together. Yeah. Uh, and it also had its foundation a little bit further back, you know, when she shoots the bad guy and right. then they're having the conversation afterwards and he feels so badly that he failed her right that she had to do that no one her age should have to do that and yet wake up dude look at the world you're living in and she's yeah. kind of like does it get easier when you get older and he's like no i mean they're really coming yeah. into sync here and i love right. that character development and the growth of that bond yeah a- absolutely kind of the the entire series as a whole both games they really your your enjoyment of the series will depend on how much you enjoy the connection between Joel and Ellie, right? Yeah. Now, and- with the two of them, they are really leaning into adapt adaptation actors because you know <laughs> they both. You know where where else have we seen them? Oh well, he's on The Mandalorian. She's on Game of Thrones and Stranger Things. I think, right? Uh, I don't think she's on Stranger Things. No, uh, she was on Game of Thrones. Okay. If she was something else, I, it's beyond me. Hmm. Um, but yeah, he's Mandalorian. You know, they're they're leaning into these things, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's just fun to see actors from other things that are coming in big here. But you know, with Tess, I mentioned Fringe. Did mm-hmm. did you ever watched Fringe? No. Is that in your rep? Oh my goodness, you need to go find that, <laughs> something about that show. I know it's a little older, but it's not super old. Right. Uh, you would totally love that show. Really? Oh, I, man. I I really want to watch uh, Chernobyl. 
because I guess the the people that are making Last of Us right now are the people that made Chernobyl. Okay, I've not seen that. Yeah, I I haven't either, but um, I I think it's kind of the the same kind of thing, you know, apocalypse that kind of thing. <laughs> that that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I do. So I want to mention a couple things. There's a couple things we've covered that I want to touch on. And I guess I'll go back to the most recent thing. Your enjoyment of The Last of Us will depend on your enjoyment of Joel and Ellie, right? And so I think that Pedro Pascal is an excellent Joel. I think that he really encapsulates like who Joel is from the video game. I have major problems with Bella Ramsey. So really? Yeah, so I'm I'm interested just to hear your take before I give you any of my bias. You know what what do you think of Bella Ramsey? How do you do you like the interaction she's having with Joel without knowing like what she's like in the video game? Yeah, see, I have no context. Right, I love her. I think she's fascinating. I think she's oh, doing okay. a really great job. I think she's playing well this teenager in a weird situation who's just trying to make the best of things, but has also got this innocence curiosity that right. has underneath it, not entirely innocent. Right. You know, she's got some stuff in the background. I think she's playing it really well. Right. Okay. That's, that's good to hear then. Uh, Cause in the game, she is very quiet and shy and innocent and she she doesn't have like this attitude that Bella Ramsey has, and I I see why they're doing it this way. And I I guess I, I you know I, at the end of the day I really don't mind because they're doing everything else so well. But the cool thing about it in the game is that Joel is treating her like crap in the game, like just like he is in the show right now, right? And, or I guess prior to episode four. And, and so you have this really sweet and innocent girl who doesn't even want to be a part of this. Like she just wants to go somewhere safe. And you have Joel who's just so damaged and cynical. And he's just like, you know, you're just cargo. Like, I don't even want you with me. And so you're, you're playing as this guy and you're like, this guy's an asshole. Like, why is he the main character? I don't even like him. But then over time that relationship kind of develops and her being the complete opposite Joel brings him full circle. You know what I mean? Okay. My take on that then again, no background with the video game. Mm. They've given her something that for TV is a little more interesting. That's She's fair. not just this innocent wallflower in the background, taking abuse and doing whatever he says. Right. That's fair. She has agency. She's a more, active character more naturally inquisitive she's got a little bit of pushback she's not always going to just do what he says as we yeah. see with the gun multiple times right. you know <laughs> yeah and that's more compelling and i that's think true. for today's audience they're more accepting of that right than her that's just fair. to be this secondary background flower yeah that's that's very true and i i definitely understand why why they did that for TV. And and that's one of the things that, you know, you've mentioned when we've talked adaptations before that, you know, sometimes they just, they have to make changes like that. Otherwise the, the normal audience won't gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. They won't get it. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's just a, it's a nitpick. You know what I mean? If that's my biggest nitpick, then I'm so happy. I'm so happy that that is my biggest uh, flaw that I see in the show, if it even is that. Um, but you were asking about episode three and those characters. So that is an interesting um, kind of change of events. And I don't know if you've been watching the after the episode things that the oh, I have you, not. You should. You should definitely watch them. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're, they're only like four minutes long or something. And, you know, Neil Druckmann, the guy that made the game, in, in that after the episode thing, he says, this is our biggest divergence from the game. Because what yeah. happens what happens in the game is Joel and Ellie are on the road, like you see there in the beginning, and they come up to uh, Bill's house, he, his whole like fortress, like you see. Mm-hmm. And Bill is alive 
and he's fighting off all of these uh, clickers that are kind of walking around. And Frank is dead. He, I, I forget, either Bill hung him or he hung himself because they had gotten in some really big argument and just kind of blew up at each other. I don't. Okay, remember. That's a big difference. Yeah, exactly. Holy crap. Yeah, they, they completely flipped it. Yeah. And so I don't remember any mention of them being gay, but but some people have said that there was like a note you could find or something like that in the game that kind of hinted to it. So I think they kind of took that and ran with it, which I'm fine with. What I didn't really like about episode three is I think we just spent too much time with with Bill and Frank. Like we just spent way, way, way too much time with them. That whole thing could have been condensed down to like even 30 minutes and then it could go back to Joel and Ellie. And I I mentioned this in my thing last night. I said, I was watching it and I kept expecting any minute now to go back to Joel and Ellie. And I'm like, okay, it'll happen in a minute. In a minute, it'll happen. It's going to happen. And it was just the whole episode of them. And by the end of them, in my notes on my phone, I'm like, what is going on right? Are they doing a whole episode of these guys? Because they were such a small, like kind of insignificant part of the game and and bill is like a beloved character from the game but he's literally like you you play in that area for like an hour it's not like a Mm -hmm. long time Mm -hmm. um so i didn't really understand the choice to have that go on for as long as it did but you're right it was an absolutely outstanding piece of television like the way that it was shot uh both of those guys should get like all all the awards just give nick offerman every award you can throw at him he was awesome he was was yeah so good his best acting i've ever seen from him but you know it's the kind of thing we see from you know entertainment these days though uh showrunners writers decide they want to tell a story they want to make a statement they go beyond what the source material does and they lean into something hard you know and that's what they did here yeah. And they're trying to show, they're trying to normalize a kind of relationship that, you know, for a long time was not acceptable at all. And and, right. and society has changed and they're showing this is normal. This is good. That's what they're doing. Right. It's not really what the show is about. Right. But they decided to take an episode to invest <laughs> in that. Right. And for some fans, that can tick them off. You know, yeah. Wheel of Time, we've talked about it. You know, they've leaned into the same kind of, you know, LGBT. Right. They've leaned into it much harder than the books really do. The yeah. Stuff's there. You can see yeah. it, but they're really investing in it for the show. Right. And some of the audience loves that. And some, that show is garbage because of it. You know, so right. that's yeah. the risk they took, you know? Yeah, and I, I think with these guys, you know it's it's interesting because i really i i really don't have any way to be like upset about it or anything because they didn't take anything away you know what i mean like that and that was my that was my problem with wheel of time was you know if you're gonna add stuff if you're gonna add new stuff that's fine but don't take away the stuff that i like and so (laughs) you know you you have joel and ellie And they're on the road just like they are in the game. And then you have this kind of intermission showing Bill and Frank. And then afterward, we get right back to Joel and Ellie. And I think, like, if you're going to do it, that is a perfect way to do it. Like, don't, you know, like, at least it wasn't a whole episode devoted to this. And then, you know, carving out some chunk of uh, Joel and Ellie's journey. It it got us right back to it and it kept going. And I really appreciated that because I I have no doubt that they're going to take two seasons to tell the first game story because we're still like right at the beginning. And so, you know, I'm like, I I see some people out there saying, well, they they used a whole episode on this and like, how are we going to get to the end of the first game by the end of season one we're not and that's fine dude if they want to take three seasons to tell the first game that is good with me man they can go that that gives them time to go super slow 
it gives them time to show other perspectives that are kind of kind of shown in the game but not like front and center Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so i'm like you know i'm i'm fine with that if they want to take two two or three seasons to tell this story like i'm not in any rush as long as we're not taking stuff away yeah and and it seems like that's exactly what they're doing so so far i haven't noticed any big pieces getting cut cut out or anything like that okay a couple other thoughts i shoot out out here i was really hitting me when i was watching episode four Mm. Uh, i mean i'd seen it in the other episodes but i'm really paying attention hbo has spent a lot of money on this show yeah the the background the sets the scenery overall i mean they've really paid attention to create something that looks awesome does not look fake they've they've paid attention to a lot of little details it's really impressive yeah. um the other a thing lot. is just i i want to make sure we're definitely giving props to pedro pascal you know oh yeah before the mandalorian he was also on game of thrones and we didn't say was anything he? about that oberon oh. martell huh. he's the one who's killed by the mountain in a duel with his oh, eyes okay. getting gouged out it, it was it's a brutal and one of the best kills in the whole show but i'm like so did he and bella meet beforehand i mean they weren't in the same scenes but they were on right. the same show i'm yeah. just curious is the same season oh no i don't hmm i couldn't say i'd have to go back and double check that shoot i can go back and double check that while we're talking <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so let's see what else uh... Oh, so then the other interesting thing about episode three was Neil Druckmann said that he wanted to show two very different kinds of love. And one of them is, you know, this comparatively very wholesome and pure love that Bill and Frank had. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but yes. But as as we as we get to the end of the first game, you'll see a very different kind of love. Okay. And so he's he's wanting to contrast these these two things. And when he said that, you know, it's it's one of those things where you're like, OK, like I get why you made that choice. I still don't understand why they took a whole episode to do it. But mm-hmm. I'm like, I understand the choice. And then we get that letter. Oh my God, that letter at the end of episode three, where he's like, you know, this is a horrible world and I hate it, but you find that one person you love and you love them with everything you got and you kill every motherfucker that gets in your way. (laughs) And it's such a good, oh, and just like for, for those of us that, you know, know the end, we're like, oh, that was good. Um, so I can't wait for you to, I can't wait for you to see it <laughs> about that letter. I also enjoyed the beginning of it where it basically says, <laughs> hi, Joel, if someone's reading this, it's going to be you. Anybody else would have been blown up by our landmines. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, true, true. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that whole like montage at the beginning where he's like in his cellar and the, the soldiers are up above. He's like, you new world order jackboot yeah all this yeah stuff. and then he goes out into the town and he goes to home depot he goes and gets raid gas. the wine shop <laughs> yeah beautiful should have been a clue right there right yeah you know, where yeah. we're going he right. was uh, refined to taste so he's sitting right. there he's cutting his steak he's got his cabernet it was beautiful see <laughs> uh, yeah all of all of that went way over my head I, I I didn't I didn't even get it at all until the piano scene happened and I was like wait what wait wait what did they do <laughs> so funny though he's sitting there in the background he's letting him play his piano and then he just no stop I can't take it anymore yeah. and it's not because he's being too harsh on the piano it's because he's mistreating Linda Ronstadt <laughs> I'm like oh, oh my God. it must be like this oh it was just funny That's yeah I, I don't even know who linda Ron- ronstadt is <laughs> she was in, they they played her song in episode two right At, when they were driving out was that episode two 
or no, that was the end of episode. No, that's three. the end of episode three because you yeah. know it's in the car still. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So who is that? I don't. I don't. She know. was just a pop star back in the seventies oh, okay. and into the early eighties. Yeah, that's all. I'm older than you. I know Linda yeah. Ronstadt. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know Fringe. You know. <laughs> yeah. I know Pedro Pascal was on Game of Thrones. You're too young, right. but I, okay. I know. By the way, I did look it up. No, he and Bella didn't cross over. He was dead two seasons before she got on the show. Ah, uh, okay. All right. What are you drinking, by the way? You always have an interesting drink. I do. Thank you. It's not interesting today. It's just a simple white wine. It's okay. it's a blend. Uh, Winemaker's White, it's called. It's simply supposed to be tasty. And since I bought a whole case of it, it must be. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I... Uh... I ended up with a a bottle of Jack Daniels. And so I've just been working on that for the past like month or so. And like, I haven't really wanted to drink it. And so (laughs) it's just kind of like, I can't allow myself to buy more whiskey when I already have whiskey. Uh, Yeah, that's like rock gut, man. You and I have done better whiskey than that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have any Jack Daniels in this house. I do have whiskey. I have multiple whiskeys. Yeah. You got to come down to Portland sometime, dude. Oh, yeah. The bar is waiting. Okay. It's here. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I usually have significantly better whiskey than than that. But yeah, I, I ended up with that and I was just like, all right, I got to. Got to gotta power gotta, through. Got to finish it. So Find some mixed <laughs> drinks, man. Just put it in with all the sugar and berry stuff and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go get some vermouth and make some manhattans and stuff there you go there you go all right so where else do we want to go with this i mean uh you're you're liking joel and ellie you, i am you, you like tess and her whole death um what do you think about here here's a good question i've seen a few people comment who haven't played the video games and they they watched the show and they said it's just another zombie show like i'm tired of all these zombie shows what made this click for you have i'm sure you've watched the walking dead and stuff like that how is this not just another zombie show for you or is it well keep in mind i would never say it's just another zombie show because i love me some zombie shows just keep them coming there's no issue there okay i love the genre i've got a whole episode out on zombie apocalypse recommendations you know okay this is my jam but this is not just another zombie show because this isn't i mean this is something where it's a little more plausible to start with okay right. what they the science behind it is scary and freaky yeah, yeah. but then we're also seeing that there's this kind of like mass consciousness behind it dwelling within it okay yeah. that's a next level thing we don't always see that with zombies you know they're doing right. some twists to it. Right. And and I appreciate it. It's not just, well, if you get bit, you're going to turn into a zombie. No, there's there's more here. There's So I like it. That anytime you can bring something fresh to a genre that some would say is overdone is is a win. Right. You know, and we both spend a lot of time with fantasy fiction. Yeah. We know the tropes. We right. know the tired stuff. And yet every now and then we come upon a new author with a new series. We're like, okay, that was dope. Wow. What did you just pull off? I've never seen that before. Yeah. And that's a little bit about what the last of us is right now compared to the rest of zombie literature and film. 100%. I think that, you know, the thing that really sets this series apart is the Joel and Ellie. Because in the in the other shows and in the movies, you know, you have your team of survivors and all these kind of plot twists and like, oh, this person got bit and this per like you're not really gonna get that with The Last of Us. You're not gonna really get, oh, you know, one of our team members got bit and we have to decide if we wanna kill him. It's a much more slower character focused series in that, you know, think about, I mean, we're four episodes in. How many clickers have we really seen? We saw some in the first couple episodes, but then in episode three, I think there was one, the one that he saw on his camera. Now, for the record, clicker is a term I think you brought from the video game. 
because it is. I, yeah. I haven't heard that. So oh, I don't they think not... they've used that. If they oh, used it, I missed it. I didn't catch it at all. So I'm not sure they've used that term. I knew what you meant. Uh, right. But yeah. that's, that's not funny. a term I think I've heard. Oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't realize they hadn't said it in the show. Yeah. In the game, because they make that click, 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 click kind of yep. thing. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, they just call them clickers. I don't think they're ever called zombies in, in the game or anything. Yeah. But yeah. And so I, I think that I, I guess people come to The Last of Us for Joel and Ellie. They don't, nobody's really coming to The Last of Us for the zombies, although that is an incredibly interesting thing and they they do it way different than i've ever seen anybody else do zombies but like when the last of us comes into the conversation it's almost never oh yeah i really enjoyed like that uh, that specific apocalypse it was like oh joel and ellie in this relationship they have in good zombie apocalypse literature and media these days though it's never really about the zombies Right. It's not. It's about the human struggle. It's about the people who are trying to navigate this in some way. So for The Last of Us, you're telling me it's the Joel and Ellie show. That's what it's about. Their struggle, their journey, the things they're going to try to accomplish, what they're going to have to overcome along the way, who they're going to meet, who they're going to kill, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. That's what we're here for. The zombies, the clickers, they're the backdrop. Right. That's what creates the tension for which we can tell a great story. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. I practiced. No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I do have something I'd like to do here that I think would be fun for the episode. Yeah. In that I'd love to make some predictions on where it's going because I have no idea. I've got no backdrop. You know where it's going. Now, you don't know where the adaptation will go, Mm -hmm. but you know where the video game goes. Yeah. So I do want to ask, first of all, how many video games did they make? Was it two? There's was it two, three? Yeah. There's two. Okay, I yeah. knew there was at least two. I didn't know if yeah. there were more. Does it finish the story in the second game? Yeah, so... Again, you're not telling me the ending, but it no. does have an ending, right? It's not a cliffhanger. It ends the story. Yeah, it it does. Um, so the, the Last of Us won the, the first game they said, you know, we we told the story that we wanted to tell. We're not going to do a second game. <laughs> and then several years go by. Someone and, threw them a lot of money. And yeah. sure, let's tell another story. <laughs> well, uh, Troy Troy Baker, the guy that played, played Joel, he got together with Neil Druckmann. And, you know, years later, after the game, the first game released, and it was such a special game to both of them because it made them not only super famous but just the story itself both of them really lost themselves in the story okay and and so Druckmann said I will I will never do a second a second game because Mm. that first story was so perfect and years later Druckmann goes to uh Troy Baker and he says I want you to hear me out I have this story that I think is really worth telling And it's the last of us too. And so they sat down and kind of hammered out this story. And, you know, you'll find a lot of people out there that don't like the second game. I really loved it. I thought it was a fantastic story. And, um, and I think that it did do Joel and Ellie justice, you know, despite what other people might think, you know, and so he was like, okay, we're going to do the last of us too. And we're going to show it proper respect. And so they did that. And now he's saying that he's never going to do a Last of Us Part Three. <laughs> but I'm, you know, who knows? If careful, if, don't yeah. don't don't let anything slip out here. <laughs> right. And so, no, I'm not. And so, if I feel like if someday Druckmann were like, I have a really good idea for a third Last of Us. I just hope that the show doesn't get so successful that he's like, okay, I got to do a Last of Us 3. Uh-huh. I, okay. I only I only want him to do a Last of Us 3 if he really believes that he has a good story for it because bo- both games ended in a satisfying way. I'll say that. So. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, predictions of where this will go eventually by the time however many seasons are done. Mm-hmm. You know, the, some of the things just based on storytelling beats, of what I'm seeing so far, what I would predict... You know, we're going to get to a point where whatever's going on with Ellie is 
deciphered by scientists of some sort that yes there's something here we can use to inoculate people mm. not cure we can't cure the whole thing but we can make it so people can't catch this anymore mm. i'll make that prediction i don't okay. think that's much of a stretch i mean they're kind of laying that out there's something like that okay i would have said and right near the end, Joel dies. But you said there could be a third story now. So I'm going to guess now he lives. Because <laughs> you can't do a third story if he's gone. It's the Joel and Ellie show. So you slip that one, I'm going to say. so. <laughs> but I think it would have been a great story if he dies in the end. Someone's got to die, man. I know Tess died already. You know, come on. Bring it around. Joel joins her in the end. But I'm not going to predict that anymore. But it's not far enough in for me to make any really good predictions beyond that. Yeah. That ties to what you said. We have not had much of the story in the first four episodes yet. We're just getting started. So I'm eager to see more. Man, you guys that are watching that have played the game, I, I would love to see your <laughs> comments down below in the, uh, in the comment section. How sore is your tongue right now as you were biting it and not saying anything? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> how 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 do you think the the first game ends like if we're going in two two story arcs how would you think that the first game ends i think the first game ends when they finally arrive at wherever they're gonna need to be so that people can use and study ellie okay they're gonna be things that happen along the way but they'll finally make it to their destination okay hey. that would make sense do, would you have any guess as to where the second game goes from there? Hmm. Well, it could be one of two things. One would be that they don't have what they need hmm. to totally maximize what she could be as the cure. But okay. there's that lab in California or something. And so there's right. another journey we're going to need to go on. Okay. That, that would be an easy way to do a second season, a second story. Um, right. The trickier one would be somebody steals her. She's kidnapped. Mm. And now we have to rescue the hope of the world from the bad guys who took her. Both okay. of those are plausible. Yeah. And again, Man. he knows. He's, He's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. This is awesome. Because I've, you know, where else can you have this conversation? That, that's, I love hearing that. <laughs> that's fantastic. Nice. All right. Well, do you have anything else that you want to talk about regarding The Last of Us? Like, we, did we talk about the first couple episodes? Did those hook you right away, or did it take until the second episode for you to get hooked? Or I, I had no problem being hooked on this one, okay. and, and that's a good thing. There are certainly adaptations that have come out where you're like, hmm, do I keep watching? I have to admit, and I feel bad about this, but I've not finished Andor. It oh, didn't have grab I. me. Okay, you either. Good. Yeah. It didn't grab me. I I feel like I should. I almost feel like I left off when it was finally maybe starting to pick up. And that was like halfway through the season. So uh, I'm not really feeling bad. I didn't finish it. So did you, did you get to the, I'm just going to say it. Did you get to the big heist? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah. got to that. I, and I, I fell off. And I got to after. the episode right after that one. So yeah, I watched same. one more beyond that. And then I yeah. was still not, eh whatever yeah see it's weird because i feel like sometimes i'll really like something like i i probably enjoyed Andor a, a lot more than you did but i just got distracted and i was like oh yeah i'll watch the next one i'll, I'll do it i promise I'll, I'll do it and then i just never did and now yeah. i'm like now i'd have to like rewatch the whole thing to right remember it's so what far ago yeah not yeah. really feeling badly about it but then there are shows where when's the next episode? When's right. the next House of the Dragon was like that for me. Yes. Needed to pound through that baby. Just keep it coming. Keep it coming. Last of Us? Uh, yeah, you know, I might not have gotten to the episode right away, but I would not have had the next one dropping before I'd watch this one. Right. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. going to stay with it. I'm going to stay current. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. It is really nice to have a show again where you're looking forward to it every week and i think that we're probably going to get away from the streaming model that is dropping everything all at once i think that they are going to start doing these weekly episodes on these shows 
because I mean, look what it's doing. The the entire internet is blowing up over this show. People are having conversations all over Twitter, all over YouTube, all over everywhere talking about The Last of Us. And what better marketing could you <laughs> have than that? What better tool do you have at your disposal? You know, though, there, there's an argument argument to be made here. This is HBO's okay. model. They yeah. put out an episode week after week after week, very successfully. Netflix has the opposite model. We just dump it all. People are still talking about Stranger Things. You know, it works for them too. Yeah. You just, you just suck it all in and then you spend the next 8, 10, 12 months <laughs> talking about what you just watched and it was great. That's true. <laughs> Amazon splits the difference. We'll give you three episodes. Right. And then a week after week from there. That's fair, yeah. To be honest, it doesn't matter. It's the quality of the show that matters. Oh, yeah, if, for sure. If the show's that good, I don't care how they give it to us. People are going to talk about it. People are going to podcast about it. They're going to be going on and on. And if the show isn't that good, it doesn't matter how they deliver it either. Right. <laughs> That's what it really comes down to. Well, I see, I think as a as content creators, I I like this model more because if they drop everything all at once, you don't have this time in between episodes to get your friends together throughout the week True. and be like, you know, what'd you think of this? And let's talk about it. Let's make theories. And, you know, when it drops all at once, it's like, you know, you hit up your friend, you're like, hey, if if you haven't watched episode three yet you know, hop on with me and let's, let's talk about it. Or like, mm -hmm, you know, don't, mm -hmm. don't spoil anything from episode five. And so it is kind of this weird thing that you kind of have to dance around. Yeah. But with this, we are all locked into the same, you know, this episode just dropped. It's as far as we've gotten, let's talk about it. And we, True. we don't have anything else to talk about until next week when the next one comes. Um, and so I don't know. I, I think I like this model. Okay a lot more just for that reason. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I've binged some of those Amazon and Netflix shows when they've dropped, man. Like yeah, uh, I'm a fan of that model too. Oh my God. I tell you, I'm a fan of all of these though. Cause you don't know personally, you don't know what it was like <laughs> when I was a young adult. Yeah. And of course as a kid, but even as a young adult cable, wasn't a thing yet. Hmm. A show would show up at Tuesday at 7 p.m. And if you caught it, great. And if you didn't, you're screwed. There were no reruns. There was no VCR. Two hours later. I have a book waiting for me to read. That's all I have left to do today. Just relax, nice. read some good book, and go to bed. Nice. Well, let's uh, let's get you to that book. Is there any final thoughts you have about The Last of Us? Obviously, you're enjoying it. You're I I I love that you're enjoying it, and you haven't yeah. played the games because then it's like, oh, okay, this story does kind of transcend. It does. The, yeah, the there's here. more to it. It's not yeah. just this show is not just for fans of the video games. Right. This show is telling a story and it's a compelling story i want to know more it's also being produced well acted well all around this is a great story so you know my wife jumped out after episode two and i'm like girl <laughs> you jumped out, out too soon you know that yeah. nah. but <laughs> okay it's not going to be for everyone it's totally for us we're right. into this sort of thing and keep it coming i love right. the show like this is successful is yeah. proving there's an audience so yeah and and something i i didn't really mention before was this proves that it can be done like yeah it, it can be done you can keep fans happy and do the extra stuff that you want to do like episode three and some parts of episode four and you can still keep a rabid fan base you know what i mean like you can keep the fans there and because I'm I'm certainly happy with it and I'm a huge fan of the video games. So good on them, man. And I hope that this is kind of a a change for the better in adaptations. And I, I really believe it is. I really want to believe that it is. All right. All right. I still don't think we're gonna convert you to the wheel of time on television, but no, no. You still have to finish the friggin' books. So <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. That was 
that was the other choice. It was either Shadow Rising or it was the Blade itself, and I went with the Blade itself. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. I I'm this so that is so sorry. painful. <laughs> it's like, do I go with the book that sucked so bad? I DNF'd twice or the Shadow Rising? No, I'll go with the sucky book. What, <laughs> dude? <laughs> Oh, dagger man. he's twisting <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh always a pleasure to talk to you spencer yeah. thanks for inviting me on man this is for fun. sure before we go do you do movie and show content on your channel by the way absolutely everything shows up on our channel so okay fantasy for the ages you can find us on youtube uh, we're also anywhere you find podcasts, all the usuals, Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere it's there, but YouTube has more content than you'll find in the audio because we have a lot of shorter stuff that we're not converting over to podcast. Right. So some reaction videos, some, a lot of shorts. You were the one that told me I need to get into shorts and I've done it now. We've got some shorts out there to trended really well. Um, I mean, is it... really well as a comparative thing my biggest sure. one is almost at two thousand views now yeah. but you know we Isn't got people wild, with though? ten thousand views million views yeah that's not us but yeah. it's fun to see those things just yeah. spike you know yeah um but yeah all sorts of things uh little quick reviews we've got some five minute episodes ten minute episodes and then we've got our deep dive stuff and it's yeah some of it's wheel of time chapter by chapter but then everything and anything we've got something dropping on sunday that's just talking about marvel comics i'm right. a marvel comic fan so let's talk nice. about marvel comics you know all sorts of stuff check us out see if you like it sweet all right man you sold that really well uh well thank you obviously for joining me tonight this was great talking i feel like we haven't really talked in a while and this was really it's really been nice. too long absolutely yeah. <laughs> yeah always good to catch up all right, guys, that is going to wrap us up. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We hope that you guys are enjoying The Last of Us and be sure to stick around for more reviews, deep dives, and check-ins as we follow Joel and Ellie's journey. All of our stuff is linked below. We have Twitter, Discord, and our main channel is also down in the description. Uh, and also, I will stick Jim's channel down there, Fantasy for the Ages. Thank if that's you! Something. Uh, so yeah, definitely go check them out. All the stuff he just mentioned are great reasons to go over there and subscribe. And thanks again for watching us, and we'll see you again for episodes five and six. Five and six are the next ones that we'll do. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys. Good night. Good night.